Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. We're just a couple of kooky, crazy kids in love that love reacting to Avatar The Last Airbender. Yes, we do. And this is season two, episode number 14 that we're checking out today. Yep. Yeah, and so if you want early ad-free access to these reactions, then you should check out Patreon. Link's in the description of this video. You can get a month ahead and also see our full watch-along reactions that way. Yeah. Are you ready to do this? I am ready. Okay. Think we'll find out about this episode? Oh my God, we better. I know, right? If we're gonna be here for a month, we should spend our time looking for Appa. Yes. Agreed. Toph and Katara. Hmm. Okay, that's different. <laughs> oh, almost mom. got his routine. <laughs> Aren't you gonna get ready for the day? Ready. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know what we need? A girl's day out. Makeover. Do I have to? Hmm? It'll be fun. The fancy lady day spa. Sounds like my kind of place. Hmm. Are you ready? For as long as they don't touch my feet. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. She said she didn't want her feet touched. into that stuff, but I actually feel girly. I'm glad. It's about time we did something fun together. Wow, great makeup for a clown. Oh. Ah. I think she looks cute. Like that time we put a sweater on your pet poodle monkey. What the hell's wrong with them? Mean girls. That was a good one. You know what else is a good one? Yep. <laughs> now that was funny. Good team. I'm not looking for anyone's approval. I know who I am. Mm. You're really pretty. I am? Yeah, you are. Good job, Katara. Yeah. I the compliment, but I have no idea what you look like. <laughs> Thank you, Katara. Ow. <laughs> oh, okay. Iro. Nice. So you just go and get their own little, little story. If this is for a romantic picnic, may I suggest this lavender one? No, it's not a romantic picnic, but it is a special occasion. Iroh just like gives off romance. Mm -hmm. That the assumption was romantic picnic. Mm -hmm. The moonflower likes partial shade. It's got a green thumb. It does. I should take lessons from Uncle Iroh. Hmm. It's okay. Oh, it's so definitely not. Mm -hmm. He's from the vine, dripping in the pool. Is there anything he can't do? Tame his nephew. He's trying, almost. He's getting there. Comes marching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're not through with you, kid. Oh. You won't be the only thing that's broken. <laughs> <laughs> you. Give me all your money. I'm mugging you. With that stance. <laughs> yeah, it's a funky stance, dude. You can be easily knocked over. <laughs> With a solid stance. You can teach him how to mug people. But to tell you the truth, you do not look like the criminal type. I'm just confused. So you really think I could be a good masseur? Of course. No one has ever believed in me. Aww. A little help from others can be a great blessing. Mm-hmm. His son? Happy birthday, my son. Yeah. Only I could have helped you. <sighs> Leaves from the vine, falling so slow. Tiny shells drifting in the... It's a handsome young man. It looks like he had kind eyes. Mm -hmm. Wonder what went so awry. Comes marching oh. home. Another luck. Wow. Great little short stories. That was just so heartbreaking to see him like that. Now his son died in battle, right? Yeah. So we don't really have a sense of what his son was like. Mm -mm. Hey there, fellow. You look hungry. And Tiger you look armadillo? Like yeah. Dinner. They are hungry. The Dai Li won't give me any money because the kids stopped coming. And the kids won't come because my zoo's nasty and broke. Ooh, that's a Rabaru. I wish I could get her a big open prairie like she likes and let her hop her way to happiness. No. Let's do it. There's a big open space right outside the walls of the city. Don't worry. I'm great with animals. 
Oh no. Not going swimmingly. Oh. oh. Maybe you should try like one at a time. <laughs> the oh, cabbage. cabbage! Oh, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give up. Nice. Oh, seal turtle. Open the gate. You think? Get out of the way, dude. And water. Hell yeah, dude. Best zoo ever. <gasps> Aww. Excellent job, Avatar. You should think about working with animals for a living. Mommy, this no what are you doing down there? <laughs> you should probably stick to saving people. <laughs> Just give me him, bunch of babes. What's this? Through all the long night. See? Him and a bunch of babes. Uh oh. I am so sorry. Something struck me in the rear. I just wound up here. <laughs> Yay, poetry. Five, seven, Syllables mark a haiku. Remarkable oaf. <laughs> oaf. They call me Sokka. That is in the water tribe. I am not an oaf. <laughs> Chittering monkey. In the spring, he climbs treetops and thinks himself tall. Mm. You think you're so smart. This is not so hard. Ooh. Whole seasons are spent. None calls it easy. I calls it easy. Like I paddle my canoe, I'll paddle yours too. Oh, oh. damn. Rap battle, haiku battle. That's right, I'm Sokka. It's pronounced with an Akka. Young ladies, I rocked ya. Oh, you're doing so well. You're doing so good. That's one too many syllables there, bub. <laughs> Poetry. <laughs> Just him angry. Uncle, we have a problem. One of the customers is on to us. The girl over there at the corner table. She's been looking at you. I've seen that girl in here quite a lot. Seems to me she has quite a little crush on you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could use a little affection from someone other than your uncle. I was wondering if you would like to go out sometime. He'd love to. Great. Mm -hmm. You're so proud. <laughs> what have you done to your hair, dude? Hey, you look so cute. <laughs> it took my uncle 10 minutes to do my hair. And he made you look like a serial killer. <laughs> what do you like to do for fun? Nothing. Excuse me, sir. You and your girlfriend care for dessert? She is not my girlfriend! Whoa! Dude. You and your uncle living before you came here. We were, uh, part of this traveling circus. Really? Let me guess. Stop asking so many questions. You juggled. He's gonna yell. Yes, I juggled. Great, now she wants to see. Mm-hmm. Can you show me something? Oh, no. It's breakable stuff. I haven't practiced for a while. I want to show you one of my favorite places in the city. I'm so excited for you to see the firelight fountain. I can't believe it. They aren't lit. No. No. Don't do it, Zuko. Close your eyes and don't peek. Oh, but this is so nice that he's actually being mm -hmm. kind to someone. Okay. Now you can look. Oh, wow. Hmm. Oh. Look at you, you little softy. Good job, Zuko. Mm-hmm. Yes. I brought you something. It's a coupon for a free cup of tea. Oh my god. What? I have something for you too. Now it's your turn to close your eyes. Good. There you go. Yeah! Ooh, what's wrong? It's complicated. I have to go. Mm. Ah, Zuko. Yeah. How was your night, Prince Zuko? Mm -hmm. It was nice. Aww. But he looks like pained by that. A tail of Momo! Tail of Momo! Yes! <gasps> Appa! Oh, we've missed you, Appa. Momo's dream. <laughs> You're gonna need a lot more of those. A lot more. Whoa! Oh, Momo misses Appa so much. 
top of here. No. This is going to be a sad one. Fly, Momo, fly. Don't tell him twice. Uh-oh. Fly higher. Oh, no! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just miss beat. Goes right into it. And he's the star of the show. <gasps> no! Oh, rubbing up his hair. Oh my god, get the hell out of there, Momo. Yeah. Momo, let them out too. It's the right thing to do. <laughs> Made friends. He also sounded like a lot bigger now that he's the same size as the cats. Mm -hmm. Wait, no! They're gonna show him where he is. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Apple footprints? Oh, those were great. I mean, what a sad one to end on, though. I mean, Momo's was definitely my favorite. Momo, yeah. But, oh my God. I mean, it was like, it was so interspersed between like moments of joy mm -hmm. and and just warm fuzzies with like Momo's dance with the monkeys and stuff and like feeding Appa from the tree. But then, you know, how much he misses Appa and... Almost getting sold to a butcher. So it was, Momo's had all the highs and lows. It matched a lot of what Iroh's was. Um, Iroh's was just like so happy go lucky and uh, a zest for life and um, nothing seems to like get him down. And he was always trying to like make other people happy. And you think that someone like that, I don't know, is like just had the, the best life and a charmed life and like everything. And but you, no, I mean, everyone goes through pain. Um, and yeah, so like just the end there, um, seeing him tear up, celebrating his son's, uh, birthday. Uh, that one was really tough. Um, I'm glad they didn't end it on that one. Probably would be crying right now, but like, I think Momo's wasn't like incredibly sad. Like Momo's, but like, it was, a, it was a different kind of sadness for Momo's. Yeah. It was also just like, in some ways, uh, kind of just sweet as well because he, he like misses Appa so much. And, um, you know, I mean, we know that Aang does, we know the, re the rescue crew does as well. They're able to like verbalize it. We just haven't like seen it from Momo. And this was great that they gave him opportunity to like to show just how much Momo misses Appa as well. Yeah. Also, while both Appa's and Iro's were sad, or not Momo's, Appa's and Iro's, yeah. Momo's and Iro's, Iro's has a finality about it because we know his son has passed. Mm. With Appa, like, it's it's pain, but there's like that pain with hope, like yeah. the belief that this is temporary, it's not gonna last, yeah. they will be reunited. So like that kind of makes it more of a solve for for that specific one, which to your point, makes it a better one to end on because you're not crying at the end of it. Zuko's also breaks my heart. Mm. I mean, I realized that it was it was a sort of a happier one. First of all, he's terrible at dating. <laughs> Somebody please give him lessons. He is terrible at dating. Yeah monosyllabic and then not my girlfriend and then you eat, eat a, a lot, lot i mean for a girl dude she like still wanted to kiss him oh my god um he's really bad at this mm -hmm. he needs a lot of help but what broke my heart about it was the fact that like there is within zuko and we've talked about it before like the potential for a genuinely good human being and we see that with his willingness to risk lighting those torches. Because the mm -hmm. whole time he's been on Iroh. Iroh, you can't even heat your tea. Like, mm -hmm. no risks. Here he is for somebody he doesn't know all that well. But she's shown him kindness. And so he's willing to take this chance. Makes her happy. She kisses him. Clearly he likes it because he leans back for yeah. more. But he's so afraid to let himself have a connection. His family is so screwed up. And what little love he may have experienced in his life was taken from him at way too young of an age. 
And he's not allowed himself to experience it since, even from people who are willing to give it, like Uncle Iroh. Uncle Iroh is doing his best to love this kid. And this kid is still a jerk to him at least 50% of the time. Well, he's also very tunnel visioned as far as like, got to get the avatar. That's what matters. Um, got to, you know, love of daddy. Uh, and he doesn't want anything to hold him back from that. And so if he lets himself, you know, have a connection in this town, he'll be content. He'll want to like maybe like stay a little bit longer and like not mm. pursue the avatar like as as much. Um, and he just knows that like that's that's what he's got to keep his focus on. Um, so he's not allowing himself really any other any connection or anything that could like hinder that in any way, even if it'll make him happy. Um, mm. And it's like one of those things where like, well, yeah, maybe like you would just be happier if you didn't go after the avatar and you did just like work at a tea shop and, uh, you know, ha find someone in you know, date, you know, and even if this isn't the, the love of your life, you know, but you just date and maybe find the, the love of your life and you have other interests. Um, and, you know, that's what like, Iroh is trying to like teach him is that there is more to life than just uh, pursuing your, your one goal or whatever. Or um, so, yeah, it's just like it, it was sad, um, but it was al also like, it was nice to see him at the end go there and say, like, you know, I had a good time. I think with Uncle Iroh, and I'm sure this is probably in part because he's lost his son, but the knowledge that you could spend your whole life with this preconceived plan and yeah. goal, and it can, in fact, be stripped away from you. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to look back on life and realize you didn't experience life because you were constantly in pursuit of something else that... Mm -hmm is maybe unattainable. And I'm guessing that Iroh probably knows his brother's a bit of a dick. <laughs> yeah. And we say it. love might be beyond his capability. Unfortunately for Zuko, Zuko is so convinced himself that he just needs this one thing. And if he can just do this one thing, he'll have his father's love. Reality would tell us if your father can't love you for who you are, and can't love you for the totality of who you are, then bringing them one thing is not going to change that. I mean, this whole thing was just like one, uh, I love like just the slice of life for all these characters and um, taking a break from their their goals and pursuing like, you know, whether it's, it's going after Appa right now or, um, you know, trying to stop the fire nation and um, we're trying to catch, catch the avatar. It's like they're all just taking a day to... Uh, to relax and to um, experience life outside of uh, other pursuits. Yes, except on that note, I would like us to get back to finding Appa. <laughs> well, Mama was looking. I know, but, and, and like, I'm not saying that what we haven't done otherwise is mm -hmm. important. I get it. We need to tell him about the eclipse and all that, but like, find Appa. That's, that's, we've had a couple episodes of doing other things. Now it is time to find Appa. Also good for Momo turning the other cheek. And you know these what, bobcats or whatever, or like panthers. I was or, gonna say something panthers. Yeah, um, chasing Momo and everything, but not like just don't want to leave him to that cruel fate. Uh, so releasing them, making a friend, and just that's a that's a good lesson right there. Yeah, absolutely. Don't let I, your bullies get eaten. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's where we'll draw the line, right? Anything before getting eaten is fine. Yeah, that's fair game. But getting eaten, that's that's where yeah. the line is. Yeah. Exactly. Um, that's what I learned. I loved Katara's and Toph's too. Yeah. Uh, they've had a relationship that at times has been, I think, challenging for both of them. They're very different mm -hmm. people. But I loved that of all the things for Katara to do for Toph, she did a super girly spa day, which is not, mm -hmm. I think, what any of us would readily think of as being, hey, this is a great idea for Toph. She'll <laughs> yeah, love it. True. But I love that Toph is willing to give it a chance. Like, she doesn't she doesn't mm -hmm. say, that's not for me or judge Katara for it. She's open-minded about the experience and is like, okay, just don't touch mm -hmm. my feet. Of course they do. But then I also love that Katara doesn't go in there with some sort of preconceived notion about what the experience should be either. Like, Toph is blowing mud bubbles and she's mm -hmm. earth bending to, to make the pedicurist like fly out of the room. You know, she's experiencing it, but she's 
doing so in her own way. Yeah. And Katara is likewise open-minded to that as well. So I like when they walk out and like they've had this great experience together. Mean girls are bitches, but I love how they get even with them. And then I love mm-hmm. the aftermath moment of like, you know, yeah, all the great things that she says about Toph, all of which are true. But that doesn't wa- take away the sting of what those girls were poking at her about. And they were poking mm-hmm. at her about insecurity. And so Katara has this, the presence of mind to mention all of the really important things. Yeah. Toph is confident, self-assured, knows who she is. And while it may not be important, she is also pretty. Like, Katara knew exactly what to say in that moment. And I love how Toph was completely tough. She didn't pay her back a false compliment just to be nice and and like mm. even the score. No, no. She was honest about it. Yeah. And then she punched her in the arm. And Sokka was this close to getting his harem. Sure he was. <laughs> sure. One, sil- one syllable away. One syllable away. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go with that. But he totally owned that that haiku battle. He did. That was That was quite fun. Yeah. Uh, let us know what you thought about this down below in the comments and if you want early ad free access to our reactions check out Patreon we got a link in the description of this video you can get a month ahead over there yeah thanks so much for seeing our reaction for Avatar The Last Airbender but just keep in mind that our reaction is definitely not definitive